It is my absolute okay. pleasure to introduce uh, World Federation Neurology YouTube channel viewers to our current uh, president, Asia Oceanian Neurology, Professor BJ, fondly known as BJ by the global neurology community. He's well known to the movement disorders world and he's, he's well known to the general neurology world. Uh, he's well known to the academic and service building world worldwide. BJ, very good morning to you. As you good are, morning. As, as you are aware, we live in these unprecedented times. Uh, or it's almost like living in a science fiction. We are both uh, stuck in our offices. We can't travel. And uh, we have to practice social distancing and physical distancing. We all have to give up some of our world space for COVID-19. So literally, we are in the middle of a pandemic, uh, which I thought that I would never live during my lifetime. On the other side, and, uh, on, on the other side of the world, or on the other hand, uh, we both uh, represent Asia Oceania region, such a rich history over thousands and thousands and thousands of years. And we both know how important uh, brain health is. Uh, without brains, we are nothing. And we are both uh, strong advocates of uh, better brain health uh, worldwide. I thought that uh, the, the, it would be perfect time for us to introduce you to neurology world, especially younger uh, community. In, interested in neurology. Uh, tell us about uh, you a little bit uh, more. Uh, when did you become interested in neurology? Where you were born, who your parents are, and what inspired you to get into neurology? Well, you know, I graduated med school in 1982. At that time in Korea, it was such that, that uh, I could not differentiate neurology, neurosurgery, and psychiatry at the time of my graduation. And I did not know what it is what. It was such a poor condition. And uh, my neurology training was not good. And uh, neurology was very new uh, in Korea. In fact, uh, neurology started as a separate specialty in 1984. Until 1984, neurology was part of neuropsychiatry and part of internal medicine and many of the practice in neurology was done by neurosurgeons so the reason i got into neurology was because i did not know anything about neurology to be honest and uh, i learned a lot uh, during my training that uh, there is uh, there are a lot of interesting things uh, in neurology and the reason i got into movement disorder was that movement disorder was very new uh, in uh, neurology itself in Korea. So I got into uh, movement disorders. And you see that uh, a movement disorder has become one of the major specialties in neurology. So that uh, I think uh, I'd like to, uh, to uh, advise uh, younger generation that uh, if uh, you have something that you do not know, there is something you want to do because it will spread out into a vast field and you'll be. Uh, you'll be excited uh, to be part of it and you enjoy uh, being part of it. So this was 1982. I think I was uh, at that time growing up in rural Sri Lanka as a young high school kid uh, with hardly an interest uh, or knowledge on medicine. Was uh, David Marsden in his uh, peak at that time? Uh, did you have access to movement disorders journal or videos at that time? This is pre-internet era. I'm assuming that uh, you were reading things from Index Medicus and waiting for the physical journals to come to your library. How did you, how did you satisfy your thirst of new knowledge that is coming in in relation to movement disorders when there was no website or other material readily available like today? At the time, there was no videos available to us in 1984 when I started my residency. And it was in 1986 when I first had a patient with uh, dystonia, DYT1. I saw a young girl, uh, I think she was around age 10, and she had foot dystonia and was progressive. And we had nothing about this disorder. And I looked around and I found a chapter written by Stanley Fawn in a neurology clinics of North America. And I, I, I really hoped that I could be trained uh, by this person. Uh, who was working at Columbia University. 
it was uh, sort of a dream that I thought would not come to uh, come into fruition. But eventually, I was able to get trained under him. So, uh, you know, to answer your question, in 1982 and 1987, we had no videos available in Korea at the time. Uh, the I know that uh, a video was available in the uh, Boom Kiso Journal, but nobody subscribed. I think it was coming like a pal video tape, wasn't it, at that time? Yes, but like uh, you know, nobody tape. subscribed to Boom Kiso Journal. All we had was uh, sort of uh, uh, rather famous uh, journals like uh, uh, neurology or New England Journal of Medicine, something like that, major journals. Not the small journals like uh, movement disorders, and uh, uh, we had uh, some sort of monographs like the Neural Clinics of North America that was our uh, teaching material. But we the, studied a lot. We studied very hard. That book that you mentioned, I, I believe that book was published in 1982. Was that the book uh, that uh, Stanley Fan and uh, David Marsden wrote a beautifully crafted uh, chapter on dystonia? which I believe, uh, I hope we are not the, the inflaming some of the new well-known dystonia experts. I still believe that that is one of the best descriptions, uh, clinical phenomenology of dystonia in any book, uh, uh, even today. I still have an electronic copy of that that I photocopy and keep in my document section that I share with residents. That's the book that we are I don't have a copy. I don't have the copy right now. I just, I was able to find the, the, the cover of the book uh, and uh, I hope uh, uh, you can send me the, uh, the electronic copy of the text. I, I will, I will. We got one copy at Melbourne <laughs> University Library. I believe I'm the only person who is borrowing that book from time to time. So oh, let's, let's move along. So you then went to USA and uh, we trained under Stanley Fan, uh, who is still uh, around with us and we see him at Movement Disorder Society meetings, of course, so such a great character. Was it hard for you to organize that fellowship uh, with the snail mail and communicating, or was it easy? Well, it was, uh, uh, it was, uh, uh, it was a sort of a chance uh, that uh, I took at that time. Um, I was trained at the University of Minnesota, and uh, uh, by the time I was finishing my residency, I was sort of, uh, you know, considering staying at the University of Minnesota, uh, studying electrophysiology. But uh, the circumstances have changed that I need to go to Korea uh, earlier than I, than I planned. So uh, I had to do more clinical stuff. Mm -hmm. So uh, I wrote to Dr. Fan and he gladly accepted my uh, application. And uh, when I uh, left Minnesota to New York, uh, people said, oh, New York is uh, a place uh, very busy and people are so kind. And people are worried about uh, about me, mm -hmm. you know, whether I'll be able to do well uh, in New York. But uh, you know, uh, it, it turned out that Stanley Fan is just busy, but a very uh, dedicated teacher, and mm -hmm. I really enjoyed uh, the, the training uh, under his uh, under his uh, guidance. So this would have been the time that Stanley Fan and David Masterson was doing uh, American Academy of Neurology interesting movement disorder sessions, and then basically building movement disorder society from the scratch. Yes, after dinner seminars, yes. Mm. He was having a, after, after dinner seminars, yes. So you finished your training uh, the, the, in uh, the, the USA and came back. Yes. When did you come back to Korea? Uh, it was 1983, 1993. And how, uh, that easy I, uh, up, how easy for us for you to set up a movement disorders program in Korea at that time? From the scratch, right. um, there was uh, seniors uh, who had the training in uh, neurology and also movement disorders. Right. Uh, but uh, they were not really formally trained in clinical movement disorders. Mm -hmm. And I and other doctor, Dr. Lee, uh, who was trained under Dr. Marston, mm -hmm. were the only people who had formal training in movement disorders. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, uh, the, we are able to work together uh, to, uh, to build Moon Disorder Society in Korea over the years. We had a joint uh, a symposiums, uh, shared uh, clinical cases, uh, had a lively discussion, 
and also we drank together uh, a lot. We drank together. We had a, we had a I good think you, ma you made a very important point, uh, BJ. One of the things that uh, we see as human beings is, uh, I said to you at the beginning that we live in this unprecedented pandemic. I believe uh, collaboration and working together is the new competition. Competition is not among colleagues. Uh, competition is against these illnesses and uh, competition is uh, against uh, difficulty offering services uh, across the board uh, to different parts of the world. So tell us more about the importance of collaboration and working together. Yes, we are all driven, ambitious people, but it is very important uh, for us to realize that individually we can't achieve much. But by working together, collaborating together, collegiate way, we can do a lot to this world. And this is what this world is asking from us. Our patients are asking us to deliver. They want us to work together, work in collaboration. So what is your message on collaboration and working together for new generation and probably even for old generation also? I think it is a timely reminder for all of us from time to time that we must collaborate. I think uh, each individual have their own merits and weaknesses and I have a skill A and other person has a skill B and by joining together we are not just uh, expanding uh, the territory but uh, we are expanding or we are heightening uh, the achievements by having different skills and different uh, 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 different uh, sort of uh, expertise and uh, uh, the, the, the person that I worked with I uh, had, had a training under Dr. Marston and I had a training under Dr. Fan, and uh, both teachers had a very a rather different perspective on, 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 on movement disorders and we were able to have uh, a very, very uh, uh, productive discussion. Pretty much and like I think it's very important. The more different, uh, the, the better it will be. Very much like making a nice cup of tea. You need to have tea, you need to have milk, you need to have sugar. Sometimes you put a little bit of ginger. The more ingredients that you have, the more tasty it becomes. So you, you, yes, you, I think that's a very, yes, I think that's an excellent analogy. Yes. So you, you, kept, you two kept on building movement disorder services uh, in Korea. And uh, those of us who read literature, we know what you both and rest of the others uh, have contributed to the world from Korea. We are incredibly grateful for those contributions. And they are not only helping Koreans, they are actually helping all global citizens. So let's change the topic uh, the, the, to a different angle. Tell us a little bit about your personal life. Uh, other than neurology, what do you like to do during your spare time? If you um, have any. Well, you may know that I had a uh, the accident in 19, uh, sorry, the, uh, 2004, uh, I had a hiking accident uh, and mm -hmm. I fell mm -hmm. and had a spinal cord injury at the C3-4 level. Mm -hmm. And I was quadriplegic uh, and had to be admitted uh, to the hospital for nine months. I was in the ICU for five weeks, not being able to move even a, uh, even a finger. And uh, I was uh, lucky so that I was uh, able to walk out of the hospital again. Uh, since then, um, I was able to work, uh, but uh, I am uh, not really able to have fun as before. So basically, my life is uh, uh, spinning around the works. And uh, so uh, I have nothing uh, too much to say about my personal life at this point. <laughs> we, we do know that you have a special interest in mathematics. Uh, uh, for an example, you have written a little book uh, on mathematics. Uh, would you like to tell a few words about it? Well, you know, I hope uh, you, you read the book uh, you know, from cover to cover, but at least you can read afterward. It says uh, why this tweet describe why and how I wrote the book. Uh, because uh, of the disability, not being able to uh, uh, turn the pages over. I had to rely on audio and video books uh, to get uh, information. And uh, I was able to watch a lot of uh, uh, good lectures. And uh, so I was able to, uh, so to, to watch uh, uh, the videos on many different topics. And one of the uh, video was on infinity. 
And uh, uh, Infinity had a lot of paradoxes within it, and which was uh, part of the fun. But I thought, you know, you know mathematics is all about consistency and uh, uh, should be uh, should be uh, paradox free. So I thought about it, and I came up with an idea that there may be something wrong with the current theory of infinity. And I began to work on it, and I thought, and, and I think that uh, I have uh, I have a good, better theory of infinity, which is free of uh, uh, inconsistencies and with less paradoxes. Well, those uh, our viewers who are interested in knowing about this more, with uh, Professor BJ's permission, uh, we will add a link so that you can read this uh, PDF. Uh, he's not charging you for that. Uh, and he has collected, created a couple of videos uh, if you wanted to go and have uh, fun. So obviously, Please I'm not aware so. that you are unwell and I, I, I've observed uh, uh, how you were still uh, be delivering uh, fabulous speeches uh, at various international podiums. Uh, obviously, we, knew, we two, two of us knew each other for some time. And uh, I did uh, make the point to come and say hello to you on most of those meetings. So you are an inspiration for many of us. Uh, basically to not to give up. Uh, I think we have one human life uh, and we are here for a purpose uh, and we should act on that uh, purpose. Again, uh, thank you very much for your time today. I know that you had a busy schedule and I only gave you like uh, four hours notice uh, before I recorded this uh, video. For the viewers, uh, as you can see, I'm recording this uh, from Melbourne and BJ is in Seoul, Korea, and technology has basically connected us to a single world. As we both uh, try to point it out, uh, the brain disorders are a big deal. We are not saying this because we are two neurologists. Uh, without our brains, we are nothing. Our brains matter a lot. Uh, our brains are at a crossroad now. We all know that uh, since the 2017, 18, 19 uh, Global Burden of Disease publications, uh, neurological disorders are the number one cause of leading cause of disability. You heard what disability does to a person from Prof. BJ's own personal account. But not everyone has the uh, desire or stamina to fight disability like uh, Prof. BJ done and come out uh, from the other end. You may agree with me, BJ, the Ken Viste, when we think about him, the, the Ken Viste is the, the neurologist uh, uh, from USA who created the Ken Viste Award, uh, which uh, I happen to be nominated and uh, we got uh, for this year when I when I studied about him, you can see that uh, disability cannot stop uh, a clever human being when, when you wanted to do things uh, with a purpose uh, to the world. So I think uh, the, the what I'm trying to get at is uh, whether we are in the middle of a pandemic or not, whether we can travel or not, uh, compared to Prof. BJ's journey in 1982, 83, 84, 86, uh, it's a different world now. We can still connect with each other. We can still find solutions. I believe we can fix this mess and put brain health back to where it should be in time to come so that we can have fun with infinity and bring new theories and enjoy human life. Again, your story was so inspirational. Thank you very much for your time. One final message for fellow neurologists worldwide and younger generation. And uh, um, I hope uh, you can uh, the, the, uh, you can advertise my uh, my book and uh, on my spinal cord on the memoir as a uh, as a spinal cord injury patient. Uh, you can have a link on your website so that uh, uh, the younger uh, people can read it. And I hope that it will be of helpful uh, to understand uh, patients uh, uh, with, uh, uh, with neurological disorders. Most definitely, I'll come back uh, once we the. Once we the, the completed this World Brain Day campaign uh, by 22nd July, we'll do a separate interview uh, on your spinal cord injury and your journey, and we'll talk more about uh, the book. Uh, but I'll create a link for that book also uh, on, the, on this uh, YouTube posting uh, at our website. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day, and uh, wish you all the very best uh, and good luck. And I'll see you at uh, the World Brain Day events. Thank you very much.